Have you ever wondered how graphing calculators work? Or what about online math tools? Personally, I've always been curious about how these things operate, especially with regards to calculus. So, I decided to build my own calculus tool using Java, and this is how I'm doing it. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. So this is the first episode of a new series I'll be doing in which I'll be building a calculus tool and I'll be using Java. And so in this episode we won't actually be doing any real calculus but we're going to be setting the groundwork to do calculus in later episodes. And just quickly before the video starts I just want to remind you to subscribe for more Java and programming videos as well as just regular tech videos. Subscribing really helps the channel, and if I get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of 2021, I'll be doing a giveaway, so be sure to subscribe so you can enter into that. Anyway, let's get started. So, today we'll be working on a polynomial class, and this polynomial class will allow us to create a polynomial. And the reason I chose to do polynomial first is because polynomials are one of the easiest things to differentiate and integrate, and so I think it'd be good to start off with that and then move on to more complex things later. So in this series, I won't really be going into as much detail as I usually do, it will be less kind of instruction and more just showing you how each part of the program works and how it fits into everything else. So you can see here I created my calculus package and within this package I have uh, two classes that I've created, polynomial and tester. Tester is just a tester method, but the polynomial is actually what requires us to write. So here I have the completed polynomial method, so I'm just going to go through and uh, explain what I did for each part. I have four instance methods to store the coefficients, exponents, and whether each term is a constant and just each term. If I had example polynomial like uh, x squared plus x plus 1, then my coefficients would be 1, 1, 1, exponents would be 2, 1, 0, is constant would be false, false, true, and terms would be x squared, x, and 1. Now that I have my instance variables, I have two constructors. One takes in a string polynomial, which is the same format that I just typed. So an example could be 4x squared plus 2x plus 1. And so here I have my string polynomial input. And so what this constructor does is it takes the polynomial and finds all the terms in the polynomial. Then using that terms array list, it then finds information for all of the three other array lists that are here. And it does this using the string to terms method which I, I will go over later as well as the get info from terms method and the second constructor is similar it just skips this first step of converting the string to the terms array list so this one is already given the terms array list so we just go through and find information about each term so these are the methods where things really actually happen the get info from terms it will first loop through the terms array list find where the x's and, and carrots are carrots is the little kind of uh, arrow symbol that they use to say exponents and then once it it finds that information we then populate is constant by seeing if there's an x in each term then we populate exponents by seeing if there's a caret in each term because if there's a caret that means there's an exponent and then we populate the coefficients by taking a substring of the first part of the string before the x so that's what this method does the second method is string two terms this method first takes off the spaces from the polynomial string and then the goal is to divide it into a terms array list and return that. I loop through the string and find if each character is a plus or a minus. If it is and it's not part of the exponent, then I store it in my array list. And once we have a sign index as array list, then we go through that array list and we store all of the terms between all the signs. So we have to do a special case for the first term and the last term right here. But for the middle terms, we just loop through the sign index as array and we can just add the term by creating a substring from one sign to the next sign. So that's the end of our private methods. So these are the methods that really power our constructors. Now I have uh, five public methods, and these are pretty straightforward. I have four getter methods and a toString method. The toString is a bit more complicated, and this one just utilizes all the information we have to print the polynomial in the standard way. It goes through each of the terms array list, and it finds the signs, and then divides it up, puts spaces in between the signs, and adds the negatives so we don't have like a plus negative, instead of plus negative it's just minus the term. And I'll show you that in examples later. So that's the two string method. Then below here I have my derivatives and stuff like that, which I will go over in the next video. Now let's go ahead and test this polynomial method. So I've created 
seven different polynomials right here. So if I go ahead and run this tester program, you can see what I've got. So, so the first thing here is the two string. So this, we want to verify that this is the same as what we put in. So let's see, 4x to the negative 2, 3, 3, 2, 2. That's correct. Minus 7, 7, 7, 3, x raised to the 4, 4, 4 power. That's correct. Plus 9, 9, 8, 9, 9, 9, 2, x raised to the negative 1. That's correct. Minus 4. And our terms array list is correct. And this is our coefficient array list. Then our exponents array list. And then we have false, 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 and true for the is constant array list. Now for our second polynomial. Again, let's make sure this is the same. Now our coefficients are 1, 1, and 1. Our exponents are 2, 1, and 0. And then our is constant is false, false, and true. Next we have 5x to the negative 2 minus 100x to the negative 1 plus 99x to the negative 4 minus x to the 4th plus 0. And that's the same thing as you see right here. And our coefficients and our exponents. And then we have all false except the last one is true as our is constant. So yeah, you can see our polynomial program works quite well. Again, next video, I will be using this polynomial program to actually take some derivatives using the power rule and reverse power rule to take antiderivatives. I'm not sure if I'll be doing the derivative at a certain value in the next video or the video after that, but stay tuned for those. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.